welcome to Maker Hacks, and today we're going to be making our own keyboard. Well, a two key keyboard. For this, we're going to use the Arduino Pro Micro. And the reason we're using the Pro Micro is because the Pro Micro has a version of the Arduino microchip, the ATmega32U4 as opposed to the ATmega328. And the reason this is important is the Arduino Pro Micro or the Leonardo that it's based on has the ability to be a HID device, a human interface device. And that means it can communicate over USB as if it's a keyboard or a mouse. And as we're doing a macro keyboard, keypad, whatever you want to call it, this is important. So whereas I'm using Cherry MX switches because I'm building up to create a real keyboard, you can use regular buttons. This can be done really, really cheaply, or you can do a full, really luxurious keyboard and everything in between. So you're gonna need an 80 mega 32 U4 based board, as I said, like an Arduino Pro Micro or a Leonardo. The Pro Micro is just smaller. You're going to need some buttons, however many buttons that you're going to want to press. You're going to need some wires to connect them. You're going to need a breadboard or some sort of board to mount on. And we'll get into the complications of mounting Cherry MX switches. Spoiler alert, Cherry MX switches aren't meant for breadboards. And you're going to need a USB cable. I'm starting out with one button and I'm just going to do hello world and as you can see on screen all it does is when you press the button it says hello world and I'm doing that in two ways so let's have a look at the code and walk it through line by line. First you'll notice that it says I'm connected to my Arduino Leonardo and as I said before it's actually a Pro Micro. The Pro Micro being essentially a scaled down Leonardo. This is my Hello World program and this is the library you need, keyboard.h. And keyboard.h should be included in your Arduino installation. I'm using the web-based IDE and it's included in that as well. I only have one pin because I've only got one keyboard button, one switch, and I'm putting that on pin number two. So in terms of the layout, the diagram, very simple. We're just using ground and pin two right now. And on pin two, we're saying we want it to pull up. So when nothing is pressed, it's going to read as five volts. It's going to read high. When we press it and it makes the connection, the switch connection, it'll pull it down. It'll pull it down to ground. The library needs us to say keyboard begin. And that tells the Arduino to be watching for key presses. And then in our loop, which will run forever, we say, was the key pin pressed? Did it go to ground? If it did, then we do our function, which I've called do the thing. And otherwise, we wait for a very short period of time and we do nothing and we go back to the start. And this is a very simple macro. As I said before, it just does hello world as if you typed it and it does it in two different ways. So dot write is for pressing and releasing an individual key press. And we do each individual key. So we do H, wait a bit, E, L, L, O. But you don't have to do that. You can actually send a whole string of characters all at once. As I've got here, hello world exclamation mark. So that is a lot like 
printing to screen or sending it to the serial console as we've done before in Arduino, it just sends a string of characters. Now, when we press a key, for example, if we press the shift key or the control key, then we can also send that control character, which is not really available as uh, a string. You can't just type it in. And whatever keys we press, we need to make sure that they're released so they're not held down. And so we do release all, which is essentially saying we've taken our hands away from the keyboard. And then another tiny delay. This is the little function I did to check the keyboard. And the key press function is given the number of the pin that we're looking for, the key that we're looking for. And right now it's very simple because we've got only one key. And it says, is it low? Is it zero volts? Is it connected to ground? Then return yes, return true. Otherwise return false. And it just makes the code a little bit easier to read because we're saying was the key pressed instead of checking for ground, checking for zero. And what if you want to have two keys and two macros? Well, very easy. As well as our regular key pin, I'm going to use another pin, pin three, as my zoom pin. And this is going to quit me immediately out of any zoom meeting I'm in. So it's like a quick eject. It's a a fast way of getting out of there. And again, we need to use a pull up. So it's pulled up to five volts. And instead of just saying, if it was pressed, do the thing, we need to check if the key pin is pressed. Otherwise, was the zoom pin pressed? And then otherwise, we do nothing. So we check if the zoom pin is pressed. And if it is, we pull the pin. We say, get out of there. This is a macro that shows how to use control keys. So whereas before we just used uh, the letter keys to do hello world, and we used the enter key, the return key. On this, we use the left GUI key. So on my Apple keyboard, it's the command key or Apple key and W. And we wait a tiny fraction and then release those keys. So we just press them once together. And then a dialog box will appear and we hit return. And then we release the return key and then wait a little. Now, if we don't hit return, then you're going to have to choose from a little dialog box that comes up that says, do you want to end the Zoom call for all? Or do you want to quit just for me? I don't know if this dialog box shows up all the time or if it's just because I initiated the calls in testing. So I'm going to need to come back to this code and make sure that it works when I'm on a genuine Zoom call. But I'm actually doing this over the Christmas holidays and I don't want to have any Zoom calls with anybody just to test it. So I'll wait until I go back to work. So without this piece here, the return key, you do have a dialog box that comes up. But this is how you wait for the dialog box to come up and then you, you stab the return key to get out. And this was inspired by the awesome guy that did a toilet flush to get out of Zoom calls. And that is a really good use of a macro key. As mentioned earlier, Cherry MX keys, which is do not play nicely with breadboards. So we have to get a little creative with a drill or a rotary tool, such as my Dremel here. For the keycaps, I use Tinkercad to design some for 3D printing. Right now I am printing draft quality on my Prusa, 
but the final things will be printed in resin. Even so, I don't think they came out too bad. Look out for part to when we will get a bit more advanced and create a matrix of keys. <laughs>